ASMR transmission pan with a yellow sticker on the drain plug. Hello, people on the internet. It's your favorite shop building Sarah here with another car review. And today I have the 2022 Genesis G70. It's been redesigned for 2022, and in my opinion, this thing's pretty damn good looking. Plus, this one is equipped with the 3.3 liter twin turbo V6 paired with rear wheel drive. The color palette that Genesis offers for this car is pretty damn good. There's some fun colors in there, like the dark green and this right here, which is called Siberian Ice. And I tell you what, cameras do not do this color justice. It has no metal flake content in it. And to give you a reference, this is a folded up recipient made of paper and it is white, unlike this car, which is more of a blue color. So pretty. Since all of you are equipped with eyeballs, I will make this part brief and to the point. This car has four headlights, an upper and a lower. And the cool thing about it is the turn signals are switchback, amber to white LED. You can also see the front mount intercooler peeking through the front bumper down there. You can see the little plate for your radar cruise control and the front facing camera that's probably watching me right now, which is kind of creepy. The Prestige Worldwide United Sport package that this is equipped with, and no, that's not really what it's called, but we're gonna go with it anyway, comes with these 19 inch wheels wrapped in a staggered 225, 35, 19 inch Michelin Pilot Sport four tire in the front and a 255, 35 in the rear. And behind them is a set of Rambo brakes with red calipers. The rotors though, they are single piece and there is no data on Genesis website for the dimensions of them. So this is a tape measure and I'm gonna try to measure without taking the wheel off. But like that, I'm good with that. This is really difficult to get accurate measurement. I should have just did this all in metric, so much easier. Really Genesis? Really? I'm sure there'll be an absolute legend in the comment section disagreeing with my measuring tactics, but here you go. That is a vent, and yes, it is functional. This one is equipped with a big glass roof. I like how they put black all around the edges of it, but back here, it's painted body color. And that right there is a back end. You just gotta sit back and appreciate. It's nice. I love that the camera and the button release for the trunk are blended into the sheet metal. Speaking of trunk, it's pretty good size. A little net right here and a front license plate bracket for one of those crazy states that makes you drill into your bumper. All right, let's check out the inside of this thing. Like I mentioned before, all of you have eyes and you can clearly see what the interior of this G70 looks like. So I'm gonna go over the stuff that stands out when you first hop in this thing and stuff that you can't get just by looking at it, like how well the seats bolster because of course. Ooh, this is tight back here. <laughs> Never mind. this is a car view. They are heated and ventilated up front, by the way, and the steering wheel is heated too. That's kind of a letdown. I thought this would at least have heated and cooled seats back here. Kind of surprised, because this thing's pretty loaded too. I'm gonna hold on the steering wheel for this one. Tight. It's good bolstering. Comfy too, just like it's SUV cousin. It has buttons on the side of the front seat so you can irritate the hell out of that passenger. I love the red criss crotch, criss, criss crotch, criss crot, criss cross thatch, criss crotch, criss cross. Why can't I say criss cross? It has stitching like a pillow in the center of the seats and it's pretty and it's got red seat belts like the Hyundai Veloster N has the baby blue ones. Well, these ones are red. That's cute. The little hooks that no one ever uses to hang clothes, because why would you hang clothes there, are brushed aluminum. The steering wheel is not flat bottom. I was a little disappointed by that, but I like the fact that it has these big grips on the top and it's a good size and shape to it too. Oh, the rear deck lid is micro suede and really hot. Most manufacturers skimp out on that back there and they just make out a like cheese cloth and old wood. Nets. They advertise the fact that the paddle shifters on the back are shift by wire. I don't see how else you would manufacture a paddle shift system on the back of a steering wheel that wasn't controlled by a wire. I forgot what the name of this process is called where you take a die grinder and you make those little quarter moons or half moons on a piece of sheet metal. 
Well, the aluminum trim that's all throughout the interior has that and it's gorgeous. I think it's plastic though. This one just as it's equipped is a little over 52 grand and it feels like a $50,000 car in here easily. Normally this is the part where I would start the car up so you could hear what it sounds like, but it's already running because it's 100 degrees outside. So here's a start and rev. This does have that active exhaust, so I'll put it into Sport Plus. pretty much the same on the inside. And there is some fake sound generation happening in here, kind of like what Lexus does. Infotainment wise, there are no controls or dongles or mouse pads or anything down here to screw with. Everything is done through this 10.25 inch screen right here. And you can just kind of tap it. And what I love is these things are silver and bronze. It's very classy and I don't know, steampunk looking almost. Speaking of sounds though, this Lexicon 15 speaker 660 watt sound system, it's decent, but you already know because this is a Hyundai Kia product. Yeah, bird noises. That's what's up. Also, if you go to Calm Sea Waves, the seagulls for the Calm Sea Waves sound robotic. Like that sounds like a robot seagull. Not really a fan of this setup because I see the word P and I end up going up to put it into park and put it in reverse instead of just touching P. Oh, you don't want to touch P, that's disgusting. Part of that package also includes a heads up display, but what's cute about the heads up display is that the little car way up there in front of me actually looks like a G70. It has the correct taillight shape and the little haunches to the back end. I think it even has a little rear diffuser in black. That's so weird. I just noticed that the gauge cluster, it has an actual dial for your fuel gauge as well as your speedometer. But the tack, it's a digital synthetic one. It's not real. It's not tangible. Why would they do that on one side, not the other? In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. It does have multiple drive modes though before I give it those beans. And you can turn it from eco to comfort. Ooh. That just deflated my seat. Sport, that just inflated my seat. Sport Plus, and of course, one more time, we'll do custom. We're gonna leave it in Sport Plus. And this also has traction control that's automatically defeated when you put it into Sport Plus. You can also further hold down the traction control button and that will defeat stability control. It also has a launch control, which may or may not be used. I don't know why I say that. We all know what's gonna happen. All right. Ready? Go. Oh, that's pretty good launch control. There was little, little increments of wheel spin. Oh, f me, this thing's fat. That's good. This thing goes, damn. Whoa, that was faster than I thought it was. <laughs> this thing's smooth. Wow. Up. Do you have hood struts? Yes, you do. Those are nice hood struts. This has to be the largest and flattest under hood I've ever seen on a vehicle. This feels like a chalkboard. Call me crazy, but shouldn't that hand be behind the red slash? That just looks like it's grabbing a giant handle. Hello, welcome to Garage Science of Sarah. Under the hood of this 22 Genesis G70 is the Lambda 2, which is a 3.3 liter dual overhead cam, all aluminum twin turbo V6 that produces 365 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 376 pound feet of torque from 1300 to 4500 RPM. 1300. That's not much more than a cold start idle. For being a longitudinal mounted twin turbo V6, this doesn't look too terrible to work on. It really doesn't. And this is a pattern I've started to notice with Kia Hyundai products in the past. I think they're actually thinking about the technicians when they design these things. This particular engine employs water-cooled exhaust manifolds, sodium-filled exhaust valves, and twin Garrett GT14 twin scroll turbos, one for each bank. 
because it's a V6. Let's see what's underneath you. Ugh. It's not very attractive looking, is it? Plastic intake manifold. Pure E. Wow, that is weird feeling. It also has continuous variable valve timing and as you saw before, it has a traditional front mount intercooler behind the front bumper. I like that they have this rubberized black texture on the charge pipe and that boot is gray. That's not black, it's grayish. All right, it's time for the braking test. No one behind me? Ready? Oh my god! Ooh, I think I rearranged the asphalt on that one. Yeah, those are violent. <laughs> those are violent brakes. Hello, I'm back. It's time for the best part of the car view. Get to look underneath this thing and see what makes it unique. Come on. Ooh, check that out. It's got a bracket bolted between the two exhaust pipes. Guys that bad obsession motorsports would love this. Speaking of which, this thing has an active exhaust system. It's part of the Sport Prestige Worldwide United package. And by the looks of it, it appears it only has a valve on one of the tips coming out of the muffler. That's unique. Well, that's an interesting thing to see. It's got a little plastic valve on the bottom of the trunk in case someone pees in it. This package also comes with adaptive suspension. You see a little pack right here on the bottom of the struts, but it does use stamped steel control arms instead of aluminum. Also has a limited slip diff, and I like the fact that there's a little shoulder around the drain plug bolt in case you go off-roading or doing something stupid. Definitely not a fan of this. They squished the exhaust pipe right here where the rear axles are at. I feel like there could have been a better way of doing that other than just squishing it. This thing is super smooth underneath. You can see there's plastic cladding that pretty much covers the entire underbelly of the car. That's crazy. I'll give Genesis an A for effort for at least putting in the work to give this thing an active exhaust system, but if you really want one of these to sound good, I definitely recommend going aftermarket because this 3.3 liter turbo makes some fantastic turbo sounds coming out the back end when you uncork them. It looks like a speck of rust, but it's not. It's a little QR code. Bet you didn't find that one, Doug DeMiro. Just casually calling him out, like he actually cares or watches these car views. Anyway, this is an H Alpha TR1. It is an in-house built eight-speed automatic transmission that is used by Kia Hyundai Genesis, and it's got a plastic ASMR transmission pan with a yellow sticker on the drain plug. Someone started peeling it. They're a dick. Why would you do that? You ruined the sticker, whoever did that. Well, here's something you don't see every day. The lower control arm has dual ball joints connecting it to the spindle and a third ball joint if you count over here on the tie rod. That's wild. I actually like this and everything up here is aluminum. It's impressive. You can see there's a hole right there for the ABS sensor and also the front drive shaft if this was the all wheel drive model. Little sheet metal scoopy boy right here directs some air into the back of that brake rotor. And last but not least, this furry cardboard under engine cover with a little access door for your drain plug and it's held in place with a pop clip to lock it so this thing doesn't come flying off like a cardboard ninja star on the highway. Thank you Genesis for making the jacking points on your pinch weld easy to access and not hidden in a chasm of plastic and bullshit. That's pretty, there's actually a metal flake in the wheel. I like that. So for this part of the car review, I'm gonna try something new with all of you. I'm gonna try to shoot this in one take, which I feel personally requires the highest level of skill to pull off, especially for someone like myself that isn't the most eloquent speaker in the world. It would be hard pressed to believe I actually graduated college magna cum laude. It doesn't really say much for our education system, I guess. So here goes, let's see what this thing is like on this little stretch of road that I picked out. And right now I have it in sport. Uh, I've been driving in sport mostly because when you put it in sport plus, it's like an on off switch for performance. There's no like subtlety to sport plus. It keeps the transmission with the revs up all the time and it just wants to party. Even when you just start driving casually, it's like, no, we're gonna party, let's go. So 
sport I feel is best for most driving situations, but I'm gonna put it in Sport Plus because I do stuff like that. So you can instantly hear it drops, it's dropped three gears. It's it's ready to go. Jeez, yep, it is. First thing I noticed too in this car, when you get on it on a corner, because this is the rear wheel drive version, the back end almost feels like it's lifting a little bit and it just wants to party. Like, it gives a little bit of pucker factor, but not in a sense that it's gonna do Mustang things and go off the road into a ditch. I'm sorry if that just made so insulty, but it, it feels controllable, but a little bit wild, I guess you could say. Now, something that really chapped my ass about this G70 is that there is a wagon version available. It's actually more like a shooting brake that we don't get here in America, of course, because we always get robbed of the cool shit. But it looks incredible in that body configuration. I'm going to put it back into comfort mode. So the variable suspension this thing has, okay, it is noticeable. All right, I do notice it now. These little tar snakes that go across the road, I can barely feel them in my butt anymore. That's what somebody said compared to before. Oh, here you go. It yelled at me going across the cattle guard. Speaking of the car yelling at you, it's loaded of tech features. It does have the lane keep feature where you can put on your radar cruise control and it'll basically drive itself. You just have to keep your hand present on the wheel so it knows there's a, still a human in the driver's seat. It does a great job at it too. I know a lot of people are gonna ask what the fuel economy is on it, so here it's on the screen. And across the week that I've been driving this car, I've seen just hovering right around 20 miles per gallon. I think that highway rating would have to be just straight highway driving all the time if you ever want to reach the upper 20s. Probably hypermala a little bit, maybe get 30, but as soon as you get into the loud pedal, that just disappears. Overall, I'm impressed by this car. It's luxurious and it's different because most people that spend this kind of money on this type of car usually go for a BMW or an Audi or Mercedes or even a Lexus. This is like the other, other option. And it's a great option at that. If you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. But what's more important is the fact that there is a group of cows under those trees over there, resting, getting out of the sun, and they're adorable. They could care less that I'm even here. Anyway, first up is the bean score. It's a rating of one to five beans based on feeling get your gut when you give it the beans. And that car right there, it's getting a rating of two point four beans. The G70 is fast, but it's so smooth and linear in its power delivery that the only way you know you're going fast is by looking at numbers when you scroll your head down or seeing things whiz by your face out the windshield. Next is the cookie score. It is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend, it's an assessment of value. And as this G70 sits, it's getting a rating of 4.8 cookies. This thing is phenomenal value. For $52,000, I'm flat out impressed. And especially the fact that this thing starts at 42, that's decent. Lastly though, is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the G70 is getting a rating of four penguins. Part of it has to do with the color combination that kind of won me over, but also the whole package deal. I just really like this car and I haven't seen any yet on the road. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.